My name is Dmitry, this is Roofing Insights, and today we're in Atlanta, Georgia, and I have a very special guest, my personal mentor, renowned author, leader, sales coach in our industry, in the construction industry, Mr. Rodney Webb. Job, man. Good. Thank you so much for taking this time uh, talking to us today. First of all, congrats on your new book. Uh, I've personally been waiting for a long time. You just announced it yesterday. Um, awesome job on the system. And I mean, I know this is big. It's going to be a great help for all of us little guys who finally have something in our hands. First question I have for you. You don't look like a contractor. You don't look like you're a roofer. How did you even end up in the construction industry? What's your background story? How did you come up with your system? Well, I actually uh, ended up getting into home improvement by almost as a joke. I was looking for a job. My mom wanted me to find a job in Atlanta uh, because I went to college in Ohio and I went overseas, played a little bit of basketball. And then my mom asked me if I could find a job that would keep me close to my family. And I really didn't want to because I had a job already in Dayton, Ohio. But she said, just try to find a job. And I took a job just planning on being there for one day. It was in the home improvement industry. It was actually in telemarketing. And I was like, there's no way I'm going to continue to do this. Before I knew it, I started liking it. It was great competition, um, great camaraderie there. Uh, we would go and we'd have uh, competitions and we'd bet on who's going to write the amount of leads and those kind of things. And before I knew it, I had been there for seven years. Wow. And so that's how I got into home improvement. And then I moved from telemarketing to canvassing. And I ran a canvas department for that company. After a while, then I decided I was going to start my own company. And I started my own company selling siding, windows, roofing, and gutters. And we did that, and after I did that for a while, we built that company, and um, I decided I would gamble for a little. That was kind of a mistake. <laughs> but, uh, so I sold my company to do that, and I gambled for 18 months. And then I ended up losing all, everything that I had, and I had to start up. So when I started over, the only thing I could think of that I could make quick money so I could pay my gambling debts was home improvement. And so I came back into home improvement as a salesman and I realized that being a salesman was different than telemarketing. The reason is over the phone, they can't see what you look like. In real life, when you go to people's home, they can see you. And I was in Georgia, rural Georgia. And so people could see that I was a black man and that didn't go over well. So I had to do things different. So most of the system that I have was developed because I had to do things different to even the playing field so that people would trust who I am, believe what I'm saying. So that's really how my system came about and it really took off. I did very, very well. And so the company asked me to become the sales manager and then, and then later on vice president. And so I helped to build that company to over a hundred million dollar company. And uh, they decided they were gonna sell the company. And so I kind of didn't like the way things went. And so I started my own company back up again. And we had really, really great success because of what I learned, because of all the things that I had to do different to even the playing field. And then that's when I started teaching other people how to do it. And now we help companies all over the world. So that's a quick overview of my whole story. It's an amazing story and I have to confess, um, I have started following you about two years ago and it's different. It's, it's, it's complete opposite with everybody thinking. Even when you know the system, you're still trying to outsmart it. And I get a lot of things, uh, you, you said it, best you were black you have to do things differently so that's how I came up I'm Russian when I started uh, being in, I actually used to work here in Atlanta and I remember my clients telling me that when they grew up their parents were scaring them being Russian so now I'm coming to their homes selling services I have to be either best of the best or do things differently that's why it works I know you work with a 
multi-billion dollar corporations. But you have such a big heart, like sitting here with me, little guy, I mean, I, I don't understand why you do what you do because I can never repay you. What drives you? What is it that motivates you to go and help the small companies like ours? Because I see, I follow you for two years. I see business owners all the time and I see the time you put in them and how you answer a question. You're so passionate about it. Like, what is it that drives you to help us? Well, you know, honestly, the way that I look at it is this. This business changed my life. In 2000, I was dead broke. I've bounced one check in my life, and it was for $15 in 2000. That's about as low as you can go. And I was able to get back into home improvement and change my entire life in 24 months. And when I go out, and, and really it's a really interesting story. I went, my son was in kindergarten, and I went to this kindergarten graduation, and they have every kid get up and say what they want to be when they grow up. And almost every one of those kids said they wanted to be a doctor or a lawyer. Even my own son didn't say home improvement. And I'm like, wow, why don't we get more respect? Why don't kids want to do what we do? I mean, we take care of our families very well. And I said, well, you know what? I owe it to this business to do that. It's changed my life. So what I just try to do is change other people's lives. And that is my big thing. And my biggest, my biggest goal is to make 20 millionaires by the time I retire. So far, we're at 10 millionaires that we made. What I call it making a millionaire is somebody that wasn't even making a lot of money and now they're worth multiple millions of dollars. Financially, you cash and property. Once you become a multimillionaire, then I've accomplished my goal. And, my, and I started, I was 10, and that went really quickly. Our system was working so much better than I thought. And I'm not really ready to retire yet, so I increased it to 20. So I got 10 more to go, then I'm done. Wow, that's amazing. And I agree with you that, and actually I think back in the day, maybe 50, 60 years ago, builders and tradesmen were more respected now, you know, I'm talking to a lot of young kids and nobody wants to get in trades anymore. Like being the roofer, being siding and stuff. like I my parents wanted me to become a lawyer and I wanted to become a teacher and now I'm teaching people to do roofs, to you know, to look good, to be professional because nobody teaches us. Right. Like guys like you, they're random and we have to take pride. Like we really appreciate you. One more question I have on the topic is why do you think you've seen a lot of businesses fail? What, and statistics are very disturbing to me that average roofer uh, and contractor, siding contractor, in business only for a year and a half. What's number one mistake do you see like with the companies you work in that they're making? What is it, what, why they fail and the failure rate is so, so big? So the, the biggest reason people fail is they don't practice. They don't get better. Um, we show a video in our training that talks about the two different zones. There's a learning zone and a performance zone. If you spend most of your time in the learning zone, you're going to get better. So what happens is almost every contractor spends all of his time in the performance zone. All he does is work, 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 and he never gets any better. And if you're not getting better, you're getting worse. And that's what ends up happening. What we do to change people's growth is we make them spend more time in the learning zone. If you spend more time in the learning zone than the performance zone, you're gonna get better. And that's how we make that transition, and that's why people fail. Makes perfect sense. Um, I consider you, I've never told you before, but you're one of the five people who have most influence in my life. You changed me in so many ways, how I see, look at the business, and the same with the practice, you have to change. Do you have, who made most influence in you? Do you have a mentor? You know, I wouldn't say that I have a specific mentor. I have people that I love their philosophies. Uh, Warren Buffett, man, I look at everything Warren Buffett does. I read anything that he writes. I watch his videos because I understand that he's the best businessman I think that ever walked the face of the earth. So I want to try to learn some of the techniques from him. I also try to, you know, learn as much as I could from, from uh, Steve Jobs. I mean, 
when, when you look at these guys that are super successful, they're all passionate and they all have their own things, that their strengths. And I feel like if I can take the strengths from each one of those and I can incorporate it into what I do, then I can become better. My goal is to be the best in the world at what we do. I think we've accomplished that, but what we try to do is to stay there. And the more, if you stay stagnant, people catch you. So we're trying to get better and better and better. And that's how I get better. If you want what the big dogs got, you have to do what the big dogs do. So I watch what they do and I try to pick up as much as I possibly can. Well, I think you do own that hashtag B-I-T-W. You, you are the best in the world. Thank you. The last question I have for you for today is, uh, I know you asked this question Michael Jordan one day, and I know you're the best. How does it feel to be the best of the best? You know what, I, I mean, I, my biggest thing is, is that I'm proud more, not just being the best in the world. I'm, what makes me proud is when I have companies come up to me like over the last few days, hey man, you changed my life. Hey man, you know what? Hey, we're doing this now. We were doing this and hey, you know, I bought a new house. I was able to pay cash for it. That's, that's what feels good. Being the best in the world is just a trophy, right? And that's why we have these rings, best in the world. That's why we have those. But really helping people and passionately seeing that people really lives are being touched and changed. Man, that's what feels good. That's what makes you passionate. That's what makes you get on that plane, go to that next city. That's what makes you, you know, stop and answer a person's question. And you know, because everybody needs help from somebody. And there was people that had helped me when I needed it. So I think, you know, I try to pay it forward myself. Awesome, thank you so much for your time today, for your answer and for all you do for us. Thank you, Appreciate it. Thanks, man.